Good evening, wonderful people, great to be our friends, lovers of freedom, those who are hoping to be released from their various cages that Lugard built and trapped us in in the damnable zoological republic. All well-meaning men and women all over the world, those that possess what I will refer to as a conscionable disposition. I welcome each and every one of you to this very broadcast, this very day, the 25th day of February, in the year of our Most High Elohim, 2021, with the time now standing at four minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. This is a live presentation going out to the entirety of humanity. If you check your time at this very moment, you will not fail, but observe that your clock, your timepiece, your wristwatch is at exactly five minutes past the top of the hour. That is how you know that we are live and we are direct. And as always, this very broadcast is going out to you on multiple platforms. We are, I'm even surprised that Facebook is allowing us to stream on my official Facebook page, the fan page that is, which is Mazen Nam the Kano official. If you go there, you will be able to listen to us. We are also, of course, on IPOB Community Radio. If you have not downloaded this very important app, I do recommend and suggest that you do so as quickly as possible. We are also on Radio Biafra app and on every other platform, including satellite. If you have a strong decoder, you should be able to get us on satellite, uninterrupted, of course. We are also simulcasting this very broadcast this very day on University of Radio Biafra on Facebook. We are also on my Twitter handle at Mazen Namdekan. We are on Twitter. So if you are a follower on Twitter, if you are one of those avid, attentive, and dedicated people, warriors, I should say, who are following us on Twitter, if you go there, you will be able to listen to this very broadcast. And as I'm asking you to come and join us this very evening, those of you who are listening, endeavor to make sure that everybody around you partakes in this very offering as well. Because what we are doing, directly or indirectly, is offering praise and adoration to the Most High because we are about to usher in His kingdom upon the face of this very earth in fulfillment of what Yeshua said and preached when he was on this very earth. Therefore, I will ask you to share this as extensively and as widely as possible. I will encourage you, those of you who do not have access to pen and paper, because that is compulsory here, to please endeavor to listen very, very attentively to what we have to say this very evening. My name is Nam De Kano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, the director of radio Biafra and Biafra television, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. I welcome each and every one of you. And before we proceed, as always, and as we have become accustomed to, we must pray. This prayer we must offer because it is very, very critical, very, very important that we pray the same prayer that Yeshua prayed for people to understand the spiritual angle and dimension upon which this very restoration effort is directed. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come on this very earth as you have promised and foretold of old that kingdom of yours is the irrepressible indomitable republic of biafra the genuine land of the free that will set off a chain a cascade of events that will ensure the liberation of all those that have been trampled upon for ages. We come before thee this very evening, morning, afternoon, or night, depending on where we are, to participate and partake in this very wonderful and glorious gospel that only you have ordained must be preached in our time to the glory of your name and eternal praise and worship to thee. We are your children. Our enemies are very, very determined to obliterate and wipe away your creation from the face of this very earth. Darkness is trying all it can to prevail over light, but we know that indeed, O Heavenly Father, in whom every power and every might resides, that you will not allow shame to befall your holy name, because we are called by your name, and upon that very name shall those who have been shackled and laid in bondage for very many years be set free. We have come to ask for your abiding love and your mercy. We have come that you may lead us in the path of good deed, in the path of righteousness. We have come that your promise of Biafra may be brought to fulfillment in our time. We have come that your will will be done in our lives. We have come that the purpose for which we were born may be brought to fulfillment before the congregation of the sons of men and women. Our Father, let your name be glorified, praised and adored, regardless of our sins and our shortcomings, one thing is indisputable, we have always worshipped thee and will continue to worship thee. We do not bow before any graven image or idol as only thee commanded and as our forefathers and our ancestors observed very rigorously. This very generation, this very time, this very IPOB, this very Biafra shall dedicate all that we are unto thee that your grace may abound in our lives and that our enemies may be put to shame that biafra may be restored and your name glorified forever and ever therefore this very day this very evening as we embark upon this very gospel that you have mandated us to preach let your blessing be upon us come and guide our steps and our ways protect and secure all the lives of your children, those that you have decreed must defend Biafra land. You will bless and keep Eastern Security Network. You will grant them victory over all the terrorists and enemies lurking in our bushes and in our forests. You will preserve them and you will give them victory so that in the end not just this very generation those to come in the future will look back and say that their fathers fought a very good fight they believed in our lord god almighty in heaven the author and finisher of our faith and that he did not let them down they cried and their tears reached heaven. And for that very purpose, we are there set free. That we may glorify, adore, and worship thee in the land of Biafra and beyond. Now and forevermore, we pray. He say, he say, he say, we are going on to preach this very evening, but before I do so, I have a few and highly critical and important announcements to make. 
because before we came on air earlier today we received a very distressing and very horrible news regarding an assassination attempt on the lives of one of our attorneys barrister chukwe Mecca richard okorafo who has been instrumental in identifying locating all the places that their friends were illegally transported to at the end of the NSAS protest, ostensibly from Obibo in Iguacha. He identified those places. He brought that to the attention of the world and has been working tirelessly to ensure their release. As some of you may recall, he is the barrister that was instrumental in securing the release of some of our women that were being repeatedly raped by uncircumcised and diseased terrorists in uniform in the northern part of the miserable, damnable zoological republic. This very person, this very man, a very noble man, I must say, very brave and unwavering. Today, earlier today, February the 25th, somewhere around Suleja, the Nigerian army, the Zoo army, sponsored by the likes of Yesen Wike of River State, tried to kill Barista Chukwemeka Richard Okurafo. No attempt has been made on his life before. They made this attempt on his life because innocent men are languishing in jail in Iwacha, languishing in jail in River State, controlled by Mwike. And he went there to inquire about their plight. He did that only two days ago. Today, he drove all the way to Suleja, where he got, of course, our intelligence pointed us to that they are holding our people. He went to that very place, he was able to confirm it. Having confirmed the presence of nearly 109 dear friends, men and women. This is not the 56 in Abuja that they are raping every blessed day. No, this is a very different one altogether. Having found these people, having discovered where they are hiding them, not in a police detention, with no hope of ever taking them to court. The Nigerian military, with, with the connivance of Wike, and now we understand, Hope Uzadima, are busy transporting our people, young men and women, for execution and harvesting of their organs in the north. I want people that may not understand what we are doing to pay very close attention this very evening, morning or night, depending on where they are listening to us from. This man, Chukwemeka Richard Okurafo, who is an IPOB lawyer. All the efforts he has been making led to the release of different women that were abducted from Obibo, from, as you say, the ruins of our synagogues over there, following the end of the end SARS protests. This very evening, as always, of course, I've issued a statement before now, but I must state it again for the purposes of clarity. That we are placing humanity, the world, on notice because they pretend they don't hear. We are also informing the news media in Nigeria and all around the world, those who are keen or interested to understand what is happening that there is a war going on in Biafra land. It is subterranean, so to speak, very subliminal. If you're not observant, you will not know. This war involves the kidnap, abduction of young Biafran men and women, and their illicit rendering. They transport them to military, to Fulani, and the Majiri Janjaweed run military camps in the north with the connivance, active connivance of Wike and now Hope Uzodema. That is why this evening I am asking the Nigerian police and the Nigerian army to stop every patrol in Biafra land 
because they use their patrol vehicles to arrest people or should I say to abduct and to kidnap people and then they send them to the north if you don't if we don't discover their presence in these detention facilities in the north on time they kill them they harvest their organs and they send them to india that is what they have been doing those that we have managed to release so far over 210 of people released so far have cost us a fortune but we would rather spend money on saving our people than to allow them to die in the hands of these vandals and vagabonds from the Sahel. This very day, this very barrister was traveling, coming out of this detention facility. They trailed him, and along the road, they tried to assassinate him. And I want the pictures of his bullet ridden car to be circulated far and wide on every social media platforms for those who may not know everybody within even the mainstream media in the zoo should avail themselves of that very picture it is extremely important that they do so they come into our land they abduct our men they abduct our women they take them to the north, they rape them, the women repeatedly. As some of you may have seen, this, the, the only underwear they had on since they were arrested is all that they have. They have no soap to wash their underwear. Every night, a Fulani guard, a Fulani soldier, would, they would take turns to be taking our women and gang raping them. This is happening right now as I'm talking to you. There is no Ohaneze anywhere. There is no political leadership anywhere to speak against these crimes against humanity. The United States ambassador is in Nigeria. Amnesty is somewhere in Abuja. The United Kingdom high commissioner is there. The Canadian high commissioner is there. The EU representative is in Nigeria. The United Nations representative is also in the zoo called Nigeria. Everybody understands what is happening because they have high-grade intelligence agencies working for them. So they are all aware of this very covert war going on in our land. That they come and they take our people in the guise of arrest. The same thing happened in Aba two days ago. We are following an attack by yet to be discovered gunmen at the police station that went about the entire village arresting people and i'm sure that he perhaps may have allowed for some of them to be taken to the north as well in other words the governors we have in the east are complicit in the illegal abduction torture and rendering of their own people and above all the rape of our women as I'm talking to you right now, 109 people are in a detention facility in Niger State. 56 women are in scattered all over the barracks in Abuja. When they see a very beautiful girl in Biafra land, of course, our women are very, very beautiful. They abduct her for no reason. And they send them to Abuja as a sex slave to Fulani soldiers. That's what is happening in our land right now as we speak. That was what this very lawyer was investigating before he was attacked. Today, they tried to kill him today. Therefore, I am saying from now onwards, any patrol car, any police vehicle we see on the road, any army patrol team should not be allowed to operate in Biafra land anymore. And from today onwards, I am giving them, both the army and the police, 40 days, I know why they are just 40 days, 40 days notice that there will no longer be any checkpoint in Biafra land. If we see any checkpoint, we'll destroy it. There will be no checkpoint in Biafra land anymore because you're using those checkpoints. When you see people, families traveling, you stop them. You separate a man from his wife 
They take the man into the bush and they kill the man. And they send the wife as a sex slave to the north. That is what they're doing at these checkpoints. We do not want any checkpoints any longer. We are not going to have it in our land. We are not going to tolerate it. And from today onwards, all those patrols you're making, we don't want them in our land anymore. If we can do that in the streets, inside of the big townships, that's your business. Anywhere we see you, because in the townships, if you try to arrest somebody, people will ask questions. And our people must rise up now. Anytime you see the police or the army arresting anybody or trying to, please make sure you video them and from a safe distance, of course, and make sure you capture them. Especially the number of the hillocks they're using. Because these people, they are abducting our men and women, sending them to the north. The women are being raped. The men are being cut up into pieces and their parts and organs sent abroad for money. That is what the Nigerian army is doing. That is what they are doing. And they are using these useless patrols in our land to be ab identifying and ab abducting our people. We can no longer allow that to continue. Never, ever, ever will, will this continue anymore. Anywhere you see any patrol vehicle inside our towns and villages, you will destroy it. It's an order. I said to them, that that Hague, we are all going to end up there. That Hague, we are all, the world is watching as these abominations are taking place. They are all aware of what is going on and nobody is saying anything. Nobody is saying nothing. The Nigerian state, the Janjaweed Fulani Kabao in Asorok have declared war on the people of Biafra. They did not announce it, but they have declared war on the people of Biafra. And it is our duty and responsibility to safeguard our land, to make sure that our people are safe. And that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to nip this problem in the bud. This problem is from the illegal checkpoints that we have, and of course, all the illegal patrols, patrols we have in our villages. We can no longer allow that to continue. They said, this is some zoo that said, or should I say the IG announced a few weeks ago that there will be no more checkpoints anywhere. But in Biafra land, you have checkpoints all over the place. We do not want that to continue. It can no longer continue. Anytime we see any patrol vehicle, we will regard you as a legitimate target because you have come to kidnap our people. Those asking us to do nothing. So we do nothing and they keep taking our women and raping them in the north? Is that what you're telling me? We should fold our hands and do nothing as they continue to abduct our young men? Is that what you're saying? If you go to, if not for this attempt on this lawyer's life today, we would not have known what these animals are up to. Why are you holding 109 people captive in Sulaita, in a military barracks? What for? In a concentration camp? What for, I'm asking the same people that are negotiating with their own bandits that they created. They give money to bandits. They give everything to them. You see an innocent person going for going to his business place. You abduct him and you send him to Sunaja, to a military camp. Where have you seen such levels of injustice anywhere else around the world? Where have you seen it? I'm asking you. Why must we allow all this nonsense to continue? I don't blame them. We allowed the likes of idiots like Obioso to be imposed. Not, in fact, nobody has accepted him. It is the zoo media and that's what rock that imposed him through Hopo Zarema. You have all these imbecilic governors, these do-nothing governors. Whereas their counterparts in the north are negotiating with terrorists and bandits, rapists and murderers. They come to our land. They see you, they look around, there's nobody watching. They come to your workplace, they come to your business place, and they abduct you, and they send you to the north. What type of nonsense is that? That is why there'll be no more checkpoints in our land. And any patrol vehicle we see outside any major city or metropolis, you become a legitimate target. You become a legitimate target. As simple as that. And all those people are arrested as a result of whatever they claim happened to their police station in our bank, all those people you arrested, are they part of it? Where in this world do you go about arresting innocent people? Why don't you try and catch those responsible for the crime itself? Why are you going about trying to arrest innocent people? I don't understand it. Without jumping them. 
All the people you have been killing over the years, their relatives are angry. They have brothers and they are angry. They are very, very upset. You can't be killing people and expect them to do nothing. They must react. So perhaps, perhaps those of them attacking your stations are relatives of those you killed. At Hongkong, National High School, Aba, those you slaughtered at the water during Trump's solidarity rally, those you killed at Enugu, those you massacred all over the place. Do you think that they will continue to allow this rubbish to continue? They cannot. Everybody in uniform in the zoo in Gaffaland at the moment, you must watch yourselves very, very carefully. We outnumber you. We outnumber you by over a hundred thousand to one. We outnumber you. Do not bring out your patrol vehicles in the villages because that is where you commit all these impunities. In the town, you can use your siren and be moving about as your business. There will be no checkpoint anywhere in Gaffaland. Anybody at a checkpoint, you are a dead person already. As I'm speaking, as I'm preaching, go and share this everywhere. I don't care where you take it to. I don't care where you take this broadcast to. I don't give a damn. I don't care. I don't give a toss where you take it to. There will be no checkpoint in Biafra land. There will be no police patrol anywhere in Biafra land. And anywhere they come for an arrest, they must be resisted. Anywhere they go to. That is why you have 109 people. They don't want to take them to court. Because they know they've done nothing. If they are sure of getting any conviction, they would have taken them to court. But they cannot do it. Ask yourselves why. Why are they not taking these people to court? Because they know they're innocent. And why are they in military custody? What has the army got to do with civil matter? The army's job is to protect the country from external, I repeat, external aggression. What are you doing abducting people? Raping our women every day. Some of you are not ashamed. Some of you are not ashamed that your women are being raped every blessed day and you do nothing. You wake up in the morning, you gossip from morning till night, at the end of the day, you end up doing absolutely nothing. Shame on all of you. Shame on all of you that have allowed this nonsense to continue, that have given full and the liver, the full and gentle, filthy, uncircumcised idiots, the, this, the, these wretched souls that have no parents, that have no fathers anywhere. Mad people from all across the Sahel, you allow them to come to our land. Take our women to to Sicilia. Take them to Mina. Take them to all the camps in the northern part of the zoo and be raping them every blessed day. And you wake up in the morning and you're telling me you're a Jafran. I'm I'm evil. I'm a job. I'm this rubbish and that rubbish. No more patrol in our villages. If we say you are a dead man, mad people everywhere. No more checkpoints. I said no more. I will allow them 40 days to tidy it up. There will be no checkpoints in our land. They are going to come and they are going to die there. Like Pharaoh did. As Pharaoh drowned in the middle of the Red Sea, so are they going to drown in our land? They will drown in our bushes and in our forests. Their blood, I'm telling you, will form manure for the next generation of trees that will grow in our forests. I am making it very clear so you can cut out this part of the speech. All the useless and foolish, cut it out and send it to whoever you want to send it to. We must defend our land with the last drop of our blood, if need be. All these kidnappings must stop. They must stop. They have to stop. That is the reason why Baristo Korafo nearly lost his life today. The same thing they did to Barista Joffe a while back, stormed his house, burnt his house down. For no reason. Burnt his house down. Always looking for trouble. Always. They are the ones looking for trouble. And as soon as they find that trouble they're looking for, they start complaining. They start complaining. All those, I'm telling you about, okay, Ziba, so all those you arrested in Aba, you must release all of them. All of them must be released. I said, all must be released. That madness you people are looking for, you have found it now. You must release everybody you arrested in Abia State. Everybody. Or else you have yourselves to blame. You will have yourselves to blame. The left rear wheel of the car SUV being driven by Barista Okorafo had a black paint on it because I... I got information from him when he left there. 
once he found it, he actually went back into the Sulaja Area Command and made a report. And then he drove off. Shortly afterwards, a white Hilux truck or van pulled up beside him and opened fire. The picture is everywhere of his bullet ridden car that he was driving. He nearly died. Now, the army have taken it and the police have taken it upon themselves to execute summary judgment on our people. Even our lawyers are no longer safe, which means we can no longer trust the legal system of the zoo. We never trusted them before, but whatever trust that we have left, we can no longer repose it in these people that want us all dead. That is why we can no longer allow the arrest of anybody anymore because we don't know where they're going to end up. If the United Nations wants to come and administer the Afrilanders entirely up to them, I would welcome them to come because Nigeria as a state has failed. Nigeria as a state is involved in industrial scale kidnapping, rape and murder of people. We cannot allow that to continue. Intellectuals and the Fulefus can do whatever they like. That is entirely up to them. They can do whatever they wish. That is entirely up to them. We are not going to allow this nonsense to ever continue. Two things that you must bear in mind. Anywhere you see any police or army patrol anywhere in our villages, you will take them out. It's a direct order. Anywhere you see them trying to arrest anybody, you must resist them. Because if you allow them to arrest that very person, you don't know where that person will end up. They may end up somewhere in a detention, military detention camp in the north where their organs will be harvested and sent abroad. And with her, if, if what is happening to Biafran women were to happen to Yoruba women, every newspaper in Nigeria, every TV station will carry it. People don't understand the reason why we need Biafra. Every newspaper will carry it. Everywhere you will say it. But what we are making clear today is that we Biafrans can no longer tolerate this nonsense. We can no longer tolerate it. Because it is getting out of hand. It is getting out of hand. And we must nip this problem in the bud before it becomes to it becomes uncontrollable one ask you what is the army doing not bandits they do not have bandits anywhere in detention they don't have their full army terrorists anywhere in detention but 109 of their friends are you see the military detention 56 women are being raped right now this night some of them are being raped as well as I'm talking now live on air. Four hundred soldiers are raping them now in Abuja. They are raping them in Abuja. Anyway, George Obioso, you can do all that your nonsense in Lagos. You know, outside you do your jamboree, you talk your rubbish, you do your jamboree, you talk your nonsense. You outside, try that nonsense. Bring anything you like. Bring that rubbish to anywhere in Ibo land. Bring that nonsense, that nonsense, idiotic, or Hanese Jamboree. Bring it to, bring it to Biafra land. God will punish you. Useless idiot like you. Useless idiot like you. You're not ashamed. You are a, an agent for Fulani. You are serving Fulani. All of you are not ashamed of yourselves. And your daughters are being raped. You can't even talk about it. The papers are there before courts in Abuja. Asking for the, go to DSS, you will see some of them there. What are they doing with your women? What are they doing with your mothers in Abuja? How many full and women are in detention camps in the east? How many full and women are in detention camps in the east? I'm asking you, George Obius. I'm asking you, okay, son of being a jeep, people without shame nor any honor. How many full and women are in detention camps? Our women are being raped this night as I speak. They are being raped. And you idiots are busy in Lagos who uh, 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 a party. Shameless idiots. Shameless, shameless fools. 
all of you, try that nonsense in Biafra land. I said, try it in Biafra land. Look at what, look at what proposed on them, Marathi idiot. Look at what he's doing in the name of state. Look at what he is doing. So you people are telling us that in our time, in our time, Fulani will have the temerity to appoint a Hanez to uh, 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 President General, to appoint a governor in our land to be sub, to be oppressing us. Taking uh, oh, Chimeke, Lord have mercy. It is not going to happen. It is not going to happen. We must be prepared at all times. We must be, and I'm warning the police. Anywhere you go and do your nonsense, as night follows day, reprisal is coming. I am warning them. So it doesn't matter what you do. Anywhere you attack anybody, anywhere you go, you do your illegal arrest. I'm telling you, the nearest police station is in trouble. In the, you don't know when they're going to come. You are in serious trouble. And as I'm saying it now, I have told you before, allow me to repeat. Cut out this broadcast and go and give it to whoever you want to give it to. The only thing is when I'm traveling, as they scan my passport, they will look at me twice and say, oh, are you this man? They will look, I asked him, they will call somebody. After discussing, I will go. Can't do nothing to me, nothing, absolutely nothing. You can do, you can write whatever petition you like to any country you like. If I want to enter there, I will enter there. You people are evil, you are hypocrites. Nigeria is a place made up of hypocrites. Hypocrites. People who cannot stand the truth. What the, the, the women that are raping, he had those women, I'm telling you know, about editors that manage Nicholas in the zoo. All the women that are raping, they are not sure about. That's why you know that about it. The women that are raping right now in Abuja, in military barracks in Abuja, inside DSS, the Biafra women that are raping, they abducted me. You people are ashamed of yourselves. You are in a country where they see a beautiful girl, they abduct her, they take her to Abuja and be raping her. And all of you are telling me rubbish about resorting one Nigeria. You are talking rubbish, all of you, mad people everywhere. They abduct women in our land. They take them to Abuja and they are raping them. Right now, as I'm talking to you, this very second in Abuja, our women are everywhere being raped, gang raped by idiots and uncircumcised fools. And you're telling me about one Nigeria. What type of Nigeria is that? I'm asking you. A country of hypocrites. Because you're a newspaper editor in Lagos, you're a Yoruba person. They are raping evil women, you know that about it. And you're telling me you will make heaven. You are telling me you have pastors all over the place talking rubbish every day. Right? Tight, bring tight, bring offering, bring it. There are women that are in this 21st century. There are women in detention abducted in broad daylight, abducted. And nobody is ashamed. The Nigerian army. So, Biafra land is now where they supply them with women for free to the Nigerian army. And you want us to keep quiet. Any patrol vehicle you see, anywhere the police comes and arrests everybody, the nearest police station, you will get the result. As I told you before, every of your action has a reaction. You may do it today, you think you've gone scot free. Never, ever, ever. We will never forget. We are coming for you. We are not going to forget, not one single inch. I want it. What? Tell me where in the world, show me the world, our nascent democracy, our nascent, which democracy? That you are locking up 109 people for no reason, no trial, nothing. In a military camp, in a military detention facility, in the north, for no reason, for no just cause. And you want us to leave you to go scot-free. You must be insane. The abduction rape and extrajudicial execution of Biafrans must stop with immediate effect. I am telling the police, in any, you know, you know that thing you did in Naba, you wanted to arrest Blister and arresting people anyhow. You are going to get it. I'm telling you, you will get it. I'm, I believe you me, you will get it. In quantum, do not patrol in Biafran. I don't want to see any police patrol vehicle anywhere anymore. No joint patrol. You, can, you see, in the townships where you are, people are, you can be running around, though, that's your business. But you see, our, you see our villages, our communities, stay away from there. If we catch you there, you are gone. You are gone. That, is that a thing of shame? 
somebody, an idiot, a smelly, filthy rag, and a toad will come out and be posing for picture with bandits, brandishing AK-47, boasting about the, 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 oh my God, about their exploits, their dastardly deeds. All of you are there just there watching and clapping for him. They are not in jail. They are not in military detention facilities. But people that did nothing. Somebody going to his shop, going to his workplace, abducted and taken to the north. And all of you are busy every day or to writing and talking rubbish. Shame on some of you. Or should I say all of you? If you think well, I'm going to allow such rubbish to continue, then you're mistaken. When we said it many years ago, I remember many years ago when we said that this zoo called Nigeria is a failed state, some of you did not quite believe us. But today, even those that um, called us names, like uh, Edwin Clark, today they have changed. Nigeria is a failed state. Nothing works anymore. Then why are you still in Nigeria? These are people that claim they are, they are, they are old and they are brain. Something is not working. Then why are you still there? Simple question. Have not everything can be covered in grass. People answer a simple, you said that Nigeria is somewhere, something fails, what happens? You dismantle it. This is it. Nigeria has failed. Nigeria has failed, were you not a traitor during the war? Nigeria has Edwin Clark, were you not a traitor during the war? When Ojibu was fighting to set you free, did you agree? You collected a federal commissioner for, for, for information. And that was when your betrayal started. But unfortunately, people, my fellow Biafrans from the coastal region, they cannot see a traitor for what a traitor is. They condone traitors. I don't condone traitors. I don't, I don't, no matter who you are, I don't condone. Edwin Clark was a traitor. A massive traitor during the war. He even betrayed Jonathan. He betrayed Jonathan. Serving his, now Nigeria is a failed state. Why would it fail? Was Nigeria created by God? The answer is not everything man made in this world has an expiry date. It doesn't matter what it is. It will expire. Even the pyramids that are crumbling in Egypt. Everything has an expiry date. The zoo was created by a man and a woman. They named you nigger. All of you accepted it. Black people and you claim you went to school. Really? You didn't go to school? Look at what is happening in South Africa. I want to teach you people a very simple lesson. And then when I told you that the BBC is an agent of colonialism, you didn't believe me, did you? There is a news I want to put in circulation, everybody. Go and look for this on BBC News. Go and look for it there. For those of you calling our beloved Igor Chapot Harcourt, shame on all of you. When I tell people that, that Nigerians are useless and stupid, they, they are lower than animals, some of you don't understand what I'm saying. You don't, you don't follow me. You don't understand me. And this evening, for those of you in the zoo and in Biafra land, a very simple experiment. Go to the news and type in South African city of Port Elizabeth becomes Kobeha. That's the new name. I repeat, South African city of Port Elizabeth, as you have Port Harcourt, the people have now risen up and said, after listening to Radio Biafra, you see that South Africans listen to what we preach. After listening to Radio Biafra, after understanding there is no seaport in England or Britain named after a South African, why don't they have Port Nelson Mandela or Port Mandela somewhere in England? No, they don't have it. Even their ports are not named after anybody. You have Bristol, you have Southampton, you have um, Tilbury, you have um, uh, Liverpool, you have um, um, Stockport, you have um, um, everywhere. Not one single one named after even a white person. But they come to Africa. Our seaports, the name are after white people. To tell you that you are inferior. You are inferior to them. But thankfully, South Africans that listen to Radio Bia, in all the way in South Africa, South Africa, they have now changed the city of Port Elizabeth. They have changed the name. Some of you idiots. <laughs> I'm from Port Harcourt. PH, Port Harcourt. Hey, she make everybody who done this UG black people. Many South Africans are learning to pronounce Kobeha, the new name for the city of Port Elizabeth. Is Queen Elizabeth from South Africa? Why must they answer that name? Do you know what the BBC is doing? BBC went on to say that the name is hard to pronounce. Why did they change it? BBC, BBC. Because they want to do with the BBC. People from South Africa, all the way, as I'm 
As I've been preaching this thing for years, I didn't know that people from South Africa they were listening. It's on BBC News. It is here. Go and Google it. South African city of Port Elizabeth becomes Gqeba. G Q E B E R H A. G Q E B E R H A. Do you know what BBC said? <laughs> Uh, BBC said uh, uh, there, there is no need to change it. The changes were announced by the Eastern Cape Province, their Arts and Culture Minister, Nathy Mutewa. She announced it. They even changed the city's airport to the name of an anti apartheid campaigner. BBC said that not everybody, BBC, not everybody is happy about the new names, and the matter has been dragging on for several years with residents submitting objections. A petition, listen, uh, uh, to check the fluff is everywhere. Traitors are everywhere. A petition to keep the name Port Elizabeth, often shortened to PE, as they do at PH. <laughs> Their game plan is clean and clear. But I thank God that there are intelligent people in South Africa who can see, who can see it through their, their deceit and deception. They shorten it to PE, as you shorten some of you idiots, shorten Port Harcourt to PH. PH. Oh my goodness. They have been trying to, to gather signatures saying, oh, we don't want uh, the new name. We want to put, these are idiots. We want to put Elizabeth. As, because I'm sure today, if you start a campaign to officially change the name from Port Harcourt to Iguacha, which is the proper and original name, some people will say no. It's happening in South Africa. That is why I'm saying to people that I, I sometimes I don't know the planet black people came from. I'm telling, I don't know who created them. This is, I have no idea. It is here. Opposition leader said that um, they want to keep the name. BBC is ridiculing a name, a name in Africa. BBC saying you, you can't pronounce it, but you expect us to pronounce oh, Queen Elizabeth. To pronounce Port Elizabeth, but not Kobeha, which is the new name for Port Elizabeth. How many of you will be courageous enough to rise up and say that the name Port Harcourt should be abolished? It's called Igwa Child, that is the name before the white man came. But all of you are suffering from inferiority complex anyway. Most of you are. That is why your life is as miserable as it is today. At least in South Africa, they have done something nice. All the years of listening to Radio Biafra has at least borne some fruit. These are people that, because what we preach is the truth. Tell me why you should name a port city in Africa after somebody who is a European. Just give me, a, in Europe, do they have seaports with your names on it? They say no. So why should they allow them to name you in Africa? I didn't know that South Africans were listening. I thought that the idiotic white blood over the world, uh, black blood over the world, world, not even noticed. I never knew that they were listening. And it's a very good thing that they are listening. They are listening. They have the, uh, you know, the terrorist shake you have. I want to play this very clip for Hope Zodima and Yosemite for them to understand their stupidity. I want to play this very clip for the likes of George Obiozon to understand how stupid and useless they are. Say so that uh, Biafra is not a child's play. He's an adult play. As people have been playing with it over the years. Shameless people. Shameless bunch of idiots. Come and gather in Biafra land. We'll teach you. Can you imagine? They went to Lagos to go and do grand reception in Lagos. And rightfully so. Because they've been banished in Biafra land. Listen to what your sheikh is saying. This was the same idiot that threw down the constitution of the zoo on the ground. Sheikh Gumi. They call him sheikh. He is the leader of the terrorists and bandits. No, DSS hasn't invited him. This is the idiot that said it is clear. Uh, the, those killing terrorists are Christian soldiers, Christian Nigerian soldiers. And you're a Christian and you're still serving in the zoo. Can't you say there's something wrong with you? Let us listen to them and their, and their friends on, on, on channels TV. Listen very carefully, please. To trace this bandit to their hideouts and meet with them. Why Let's start again. Gumi mm -hmm. is able to trace this bandit to their hideout and meet with them. Why is it difficult for the Nigerian intelligence community or the Nigerian military to be able to know where these bandits are? They know. 
know. The Nigerian army, they know. The police, they know. They know the, the, the sheikh they appointed is telling you that the army, as a rock, no, they, they, uh, all of them, they know where the bandits are. But the, you did not arrest the bandits or put them in detention in Sulejia. You come to Jaffa land. Our governors are busy pointing, not governors, of course. This one is the Supreme Court administrator pointing at people to, to be arrested. I, I, I can't, I, I, I don't know if I'm going mad. I can't understand it anymore. What type of reasoning is this? Sheikh, their own Sheikh Gumi, one, is saying that they know the government, they know where they are. The journalist asked him, How come you know? He said, The government knows, and they're not being bombed. You can't tell them to bomb or no. Hey, she made them. Let's listen to this again, please. Listen very carefully. Yeah. Where are these people? Who are you? Sheikh Gumi is able to trace this bandit to their hideout and meet with them. Why is it difficult for the Nigerian intelligence community or the Nigerian military to be able to know where these bandits are? They know. They know? They know where they are. They see them by aerial views. They, they have, they have uh, intelligence among them. I've met, I've met a Hartsman. I have I met a Hartsman who is, is part of the internal security. They all know. But the, the problem. Are you people listening? I know headsmen who are part of Nigeria's security system. You have headsmen in DSS, headsmen in military intelligence, headsmen in police. In police. In the army. That is what Sheikh Gomi said. That they have headsmen as part of the intelligence set up in Nigeria. What type of Nigeria are you talking about? Some of you, are, are, I don't know. What type of Nigeria are you talking about? Where terrorists are part and parcel of the security intelligence architecture listen again please uh, the military has learned its lesson the first approach they had when they go in and start killing listen they realize it's, it's the wrong way the wrong thing to do is when you see a bandit don't kill him that's what shegumi is saying that the government have now realized their mistakes when they go before they were killing them now they have realized their mistakes uh, they shouldn't they, uh, they are no longer killing them are you listening but you can come to Olo and bomb Olo. You can take our women from Olo and take them to to to, to the north. Put them in military barracks every evening. One uncircumcised diseased beast will come and say, "Oh, bring me that uh, that uh, Yamni woman. Bring that one. She's light skin. Bring her. They bring her, and they gang rape her. In the morning she will go back. The same the same underwear she has had on now for over two months. Are you listening to me? But those who are who are lawbreakers, killing and pillaging, the government are now saying we cannot attack them. We know where they are, but we cannot attack them. But we can attack anywhere we see in the anybody we see is IPOB, we attack them. And you're asking me to fold my hands and be watching and only praying. Is seriously, is that what you think? Is that what you think? Some people are truly demented. They are producing a monster. They have realized they are producing a monster, and I'm telling them the same monster. Something greater than the monster is being created in the east. In the east, what they are what they are going to get in the end is something greater than the monster. Keep killing people. Policeman, you go, they order you to go and shoot, you shoot. The day you will die, hope of won't be there. The day you die, your commanding officer will not be beside you. You will die. Like a pig, and your corpse will rot on the on the roadside. Something deadlier than a beast is emerging from the east. Something deadlier than a beast. That hell you people want on this earth, you will get it. That Armageddon you are looking for on this earth, all of you. Are, do you think am I am I listening? Do I look like somebody can come to me and be talking rubbish about? Let, let's mediate. Let's move forward. Am I stupid? Do you think I'm daft? Look at th they know where the murderers are. They know where the kidnappers are, but the government cannot do anything because in the past, the government tried to kill them. Now they've realized it's counterproductive, but you can come to Biafra land and kill people asking for a friend. And you expect them to take it. God punish all of you and there are useless idiots. You people are about to witness something. Now listen very carefully to what this idiot has to say. I'm studying and seeing how they come about it. The only element now I'm adding value to it is that look, don't just wait out. Just don't wait and watch. Go in and negotiate. 
So, I mean, if you look at what is happening now, right now uh, um, you see a situation where some military or security consultants have told me and said, look, what we see in these bandits or what we see in these killer herders, mm -hmm. there's some kind of Boko Haram. Do you think that these killer herders or these militants, as you call them, are some form of Boko Haram or some element masquerading as bandits who are really Boko Haram? I can say categorically they are not Boko Haram, but we have to be very careful. Because if the pressure is too much, being Boko Haram more international, more connected, maybe richer, if the pressure is too much, I'm afraid they can be influenced by Boko Haram. And there we have seen the signs that Boko Haram is going to infiltrate them, but so far they are not Boko Haram. If the pressure is much, in other words, uh, this, this gummy is threatening all of you, telling you if you keep killing bandits, then Boko Haram will take them over. You see, the thing about Nigeria and Nigerians is, is that they're, they're, they're not, their brain is not correct. Nigerians, they know that it is not only Boko Haram. They know that in Nigeria you have what is called ISWAP, which is ISIS in West Africa province, funded by the late dead Buhari. Why do I say that? I, ISWAP or ISIS in West Africa is headed by the son of the founder of Boko Haram. Al Banawi. His name is Al Banawi, the son of Yusuf Mohammed, killed by the Nigerian state. That was why Boko Haram turned violent. That is the truth. Some of you are complaining about Boko Haram today. The same thing now happening to Biafrans was happening to, to Boko Haram. They kept quiet until after a while they said enough is enough. That was why you had Boko Haram insurgency and militancy. That is the truth. The wickedness, hypocrisy of Nigerians was what led to Boko Haram becoming armed. Nigerians are heartless. They are wicked. Nigerians are evil. Now that they are backing women from Biafra, oh, fear quiet. Any day now we respond in like measure, you start yapping your rubbish as usual because you have no soul and no conscience. Now, ISWAP, uh, ISIS in West Africa is headed by Al Banawi. When Buhari came into power in 2015, I was going to court. In one of the court cases I was going to, I saw Al Banawi in court. But the order came from Asorok to dismiss his case. His case was dismissed. He was released. A killer and a murderer was released. Now, do you know why he was released? Now, Buhari tried to use Al Banawi to weaken the, the, the influence of Shekau. That was, if you remember them, the same thing they tried with us. There's nothing saying, oh, Al, Al Qaeda, uh, sorry, um, that, um, that um, uh, Boko Haram has been divided. Do you remember? Go and check it now. That the leader of the new faction is Al Banawi. But of course, Sheka was very strongly rooted. The, the members were loyal to him. They knew the game they were playing. What was the problem? Buhari told Sheka to attack only Christian worship centers and the military formations. You know, the other day I was thinking the reason why Buhari was crying that time he lost in 2011 because he thought that that very mission that he felt he was born for to fulfill the wishes and aspirations of Otman Dafodi had failed. That was how why he was crying. He couldn't believe his luck when Tinubu and some Yoruba people came to revive him. He couldn't believe his luck. But of course, as God will have it, the idiot died very painfully and miserably in London. Now, listen. Al Banawi. They tried to use him to divide Boko Haram. That failed. Then Buhari himself started funding him to form ISIS in West Africa. That is the reason why then ISIS in West Africa only attacked military formations and Christian um, institutions. Go and check it very clearly. Do you know that the leader of ISIS in West Africa can used to come to court in Abuja with me? Where is he today? Who released him? Oh, there is no, nothing like him. Uh, bail for future. Oh, who bailed him? Who still shot him? God, I show you. This is the thing. They think they're stupid. Somebody should please tell them we are Biafran people. We are naturally intelligent people. By, by nature, we don't have to go to school. They think they're smart. Who, somebody should ask them when you talk about ISIS in West Africa, ISWAP. Somebody should ask Garoba Shehu, who is now the acting president of the zoo, in that sense of Aisha, having fallen in Dubai with her boyfriend. I'm asking, ask Garoba Shehu, where, who is the head of uh, ISIS in West Africa? It's Al Banawi. Who is Al Banawi, the son of Muhammad Yusuf? Who released Al Banawi from prison? 
in 2016. You will say the vacuousness, the emptiness, the stupidity, and the idiocy of your average Nigerian. They don't, people are talking about, they, they, they can be infiltrated, but it's not Boko Haram, of course not, because in that same north, there is something people don't understand. And let me also reiterate tonight, every intelligence agency in the world, they know this, but because they are afraid of Biafra coming, that's why they're all quiet. Now let me tell you, in the north, you have Boko Haram, in that same north, you have ISIS in West Africa, ISWAF, in that same note, you have forgotten all of you, haven't you? There is an innocuous group called Al Qaeda in the Maghreb. Al Qaeda, that that um, Shaka was affiliated to. Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, you have forgotten. There also, you have people called Ansaru. Ansaru is a terrorist group. On top of Ansaru, you also have Mieti Allah, Fulani Headsmen. Mieti Allah, Fulani Headsmen. I'm counting. How many have I given you? One, two, three, four, five. These are highly resourced terror groups owned and financed by Fulani elite. And all of you are there talking about one Nigeria. Hey, let's restructure, change the constitution, and nah, 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 rubbish. We'll become great tomorrow. All of you are daft. The same mistakes the Harvey House has made is what all of you are making. All of you, you make this all because you are black people. You never learn. Black people never ever learn from history. That is why they keep repeating. Why do you think that our colonial masters are still controlling us till tomorrow morning? We never learned from history. I can never learn from history. Sometimes I wonder if God condemned us to this type of very miserably idiotic and shameless existence. Very, very sad indeed. They are the ones telling you about uh, you cannot bomb the bandits, you cannot kill, but you can kill people in all. And some of you are seeing who goes on them, and we can see he is hiding anyway. You see him walking about freely, freely, you know, Magari. You kill your own people. People pursuing and fighting those that came to kill us. We are in the bushes fighting terrorism. And you sent the army to come and fight us because you want to give all to full any terrorists in all. Of course, it's not possible. That's why they brought Obioza. George Obioza was the reason why they put in Hopus Adema in power. Hopus Adema is there today to, because they knew it was the turn of human state. He, because Fulani and Britain that guide them, they think ahead. They always think 15, 20 years ahead. They knew that Mordor was discredited. Mordor, they, they didn't want somebody who is strong to emerge. So what did they do? They went from number four position, brought Hopus Adema, made him a before your eyes. Before all of you were looking, they made hope was Adema, the governor of Imo State. So that George Obioza can enter there. The idiot that he is, very useless man. He is as useless as Onyema, their foreign minister. These people are hopeless. You think they love you? You think they love you, Boland? You people are mad. You are insane. Because when we were telling that you want, he was useless. Do you believe us? When we told you that word honey and word is as useless as they come, did you believe us? What is happening today? They are now ready to lay down their arms. Sheikh is telling you. But then they are ask them to come and kill me. They are the ones went to Abuja begging them, please come and kill him. They had a meeting with Inkeper Mad at Nikelek Resort. The evil men gathered and their chiefs gathered and gave the order that I should be killed. Are you not aware? Have I not said that many times over? Who are the people that stopped them that day? Who counted them on that very day? Is that Bishop Anibwemwa? He's still alive. You can go and ask him. And a few other people. Some even some bishops. Look at how a cleric from the north is defending criminals and murderers. But you have clerics and bishops in the east supporting the killing of their own people. Where do you think hope was the my God all the nonsense he's doing from? Is this idiot now that allowed him to be doing what he's doing? That is the truth of the matter. And that is why this gospel must be preached on a very regular basis, that people may understand the need for us to try to save ourselves. We must save ourselves. Nigeria is a failed state, according to Edwin Clark. Edwin Clark was the man who fought Ujuku, saying that Ujuku was a rebel, Ujuku was a socialist. Now he's opening his mouth over 50 years. After 50 years, he's now saying that Nigeria has failed. After saying Nigeria has failed, he will now go back the next day and say that let's restructure Nigeria. The same failure. Wanted. How can you restructure failure? How can you restructure failure? I'm asking them. They cannot understand where we are coming from. 
and they cannot understand what we're going to. They didn't, they didn't see full of people with guns in Indonesia. They did not catch full of people with guns in Indonesia. Is there not the news everywhere? How do you fight those with guns? That's what I say to, to, to my friends who are diplomats. These are, of course, white people are won this year. You know, they don't love you. Um, I, when I meet white people and I have conversation with them, I'm saying they follow me, they cut them in Indonesia with weapons. How do you want me to fight somebody, some, somebody with an assault rifle in my father's backyard? How? Explain that to me. It's only then it dawned on them that what ESN is doing is necessary. And ESN has come to stay forever and ever. Forever and ever. We are the only reason why Nigeria has not been taken over by Flani Janjaweed. It is because of Eastern Security Network. Nobody had the guts to go after the Flani Janjaweed until we came. Until Chikoki Kabiyama determined that we should come. Now everybody have developed God, Dutch courage. And I must say to people that people are coming to us and asking us for help. From everywhere, we are not going to mention them. People are coming from far and wide. non their friends are coming and asking us to come and help them establish something that looks like ESN, where they come from. So the zoo is going to boil very, very soon. That I can assure you. That is to let all of you understand this. That we are irrepressible. We are unstoppable. There is nothing you can do. Gossip from now to the kingdom come. It, you know, it's, it's not, they know, they know me anyway. It's rubbish. Say all the nonsense you like, you know you're wasting your time. You can never ever succeed because we have set a path upon which we either get Biafra and freedom or we all perish. Everybody will perish. You must understand that very clearly. You think we are joking? Do you think we are joking? I ask you. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you even intend to do. One thing is obvious. Our mission is very simple to restore Biafra, and that is exactly what we are going to do. Fulani people are in Biafra land with assault rifles, AK-47. How do you want me to stop them? With prayer or bow and arrow? Tell me now, explain that to me. If you tell me how we can stop them, then I will follow you. Tell me how you can stop a man who is raping and cutting up your women. You're not ashamed. Some of you are not even ashamed of yourselves. And that is why hope was, the lives of hope was on the mind we kept. Uh, they will never have rest in this life. Why am the Fulani men took over Yewa, you know, Kuru State? Fulani have taken over Yoruba land, as I told them. I warned them many years ago. They will take your land from you. For supporting them against Biafra, they will take your land. That's what Elohim said, and it's happening today. Go back to my previous broadcast. Go. That is not, oh, I wouldn't say, let me not go that far. Let me allow other people to do the analysis for them. But everything I tell you is gospel from heaven itself. Because that is why everything, anything I open my mouth to say comes to pass. It may sound ridiculous to you. When I was telling Yoruba media, you see Yoruba media channel, all this Yoruba, Yoruba media, punch and other, you see them? I want them. This monster you are supporting will consume you. They said, no, today there's a place called Yewa, or Yewa, I don't know how it's pronounced, in Ogun State. It was actually written by a, an army colonel, or should I say a retired colonel. Colonel Abimbola Shomumi wrote this very piece. He said, the reason why the Fulani terrorists took over Yewa area of Ugo State is simple. It's a border area. That they are now effectively in control of import and export section and, and export in a section of Yoruba land. Yoruba, my dear brothers and sisters, what did I tell you? When I said it, he said it was hate. I don't hate Yoruba people. I have... Uh, my, some of my relatives were married to Yoruba people and vice versa, so I can't hate people that you know uh, I have relations with, blood ties with. I can't. There's something in Africa when you admonish people, they say it is hate. I don't see it as hate. That is why I don't believe in racism. I've said this many years ago, and let me allow me. I do not believe that white people are racist towards black people, they are behaving the way they are behaving because black people are stupid. Why is it that the whites are not racist to Japanese? Why are they not racist to South Korean people? Why are they not racist to Russians? Oh, of course, Russians are Caucasians, the original white people. Why are they not even racist to say to any other person, why only black people? Because of the way we reason. We have no shame, we have no honor, we have no pride, we have no dignity. We don't have it. Because if we have shame, honor, pride, or dignity, our people must be able to rise up to defend the truth. I was telling, they are still making the same mistake till today. I don't know if God wants to destroy them, and I'm praying to God not to. Because I love them very, I'm, I forget everything. I love you, but very dearly. I do. 
I only told them the truth. The same way that I love Biafran people, I tell them the truth every blessed day. You may not like what I'm saying, but it is the truth. If you go out, you go down, it's the truth. What I'm saying today, and I'll continue to say, is this, Yoruba, if you don't rise up now and come up very clearly and unmistakably to say that the whole South is one, follow me, we'll take your land from you. It is happening already. There's a place called Yewa. You know, written by a corner. It's not me writing. He's a girl back, a retired colonel, I believe, and he's writing this. Colonel Abimbola, show me. The secretary for pressures, Akwako Odu Akoya, which is called Akoya. They were the ones attacking me at the end of protest. He insists on Akoya, saying I'm about to destroy Lagos. That I asked, um, I, I unleashed mayhem in Lagos. They never understood where we were going. And they never understood. They, you know, they don't understand. Until it's too late. Now, the same people are lamenting. The same people that said, I'm the camera, he hates you, the bad people, he insults them. They are the ones. The same thing I told you will happen. Has it not happened? The same thing I told you was going to happen. It is not born out of hate or malice. It is to ask you to prepare yourselves for what is to come. Why do you think that all of a sudden, World Legal Congress has woken up? Because when I told them in 2015 that hey, war is coming, they said, they said I'm a madman. They say Lincoln is a madman. Now the war has come. They are now the ones doing what they are supposed to do. They have now woken up to understand that that thing I told them is correct. Why would I mislead people that Chukwuki Kabiyama has mandated me to come to rescue? Why? For what? If I, if I try to mislead you, that means that the essence and purpose of my mission is defeated already. Your land is gone. They have taken over on those states the oil and bitumen resources and now in the hands of friends is here. In fact, I'll publish it. You know what Facebook is now doing? Anytime I want to come on air, they wait for me. After a few of us to come on air, they say, you are, you are banned for three days. <laughs> for something that I wrote in 1996. After that, after if uh, they will leave me, when I'm about to uh, broadcast, they'll say, oh, you are banned again for three days. <laughs> you know, to try to demoralize us. But now they know we are unstoppable. Yoruba, please try and rise up. You know what to do. You know what to do. The federal government of the zoo cannot destroy bandits. It doesn't matter if they're... If you want to, let me give you an example this evening. Ask Fulani people to come to your village and be killing people. Call the police commissioner to come. They will, they will not talk to you. But that's the police. Tell him, oh, I have seen ESN here. Or IPOB members. Hey, every he lost, we put on the road immediately. Then you ask yourself, but why? It's a simple, you know, why? Why is it when I tell you that bandits are killing people, you don't come? When I tell you that IPOB is doing something, then you come. It means that IPOB is doing something that you don't like. And the bandits are doing something that you like. Isn't it simple? And who are the bandits? Murderers and killers and rapists everywhere. And they claim that Nigeria is one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We know where they are, but we cannot touch them. I remember I told you, I know I don't hide anything. I told you that day that they came to Olu with their body bags. Some of you thought I was joking. You know, so, hey, he's fine. He's somewhere. Giving orders. <laughs> and now it has been confirmed that they came to carry their, 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 they were humiliated. They came to take their dead bodies. It's very, we're not going to fight them on the streets. It's a very, I'm telling you in advance what we're going to do. We are going to fight you inside the bushes, inside our own bushes, not yours, in our own, where we know the terrain. That is where we are going to bury all of you. You're going to die there. Because like Pharaoh, the same way that Pharaoh drowned in the middle of the Red Sea, because he wasn't listening, he thought he had an army, is how you're going to drown in Biafra land. So that in the future, you see the way we recite the story of Moses every blessed day and Joshua and Caleb and everything. That is how our children will talk about IPOB in time to come. Many, many years to come. And they will say that God was with them. Because everything we are doing, we anchor on the grace of God Almighty in heaven. Not by our strength. We are nothing. We are nothing. Everything we are doing. Simple. And how, did, how did these people, without any government assistance, finance? A security architecture of the might of ESN. Ask yourself how. That will tell you now, up on a that God Almighty is there. Tamuna, God Almighty is there. People must understand something about us. We have gone back to who we are. The understanding and knowledge of the mercy of God upon our lives. We are not idol worshippers. 
And I don't care wherever you belong to. One thing is indisputable. Everybody calls God Almighty in heaven. Everybody a religion. And we come from Umu Chukwu, which means the children of God. Then why would God abandon his children? What for? No matter how angry he is, why would he abandon his children? Uh, have you seen any father about No matter how angry you are, God's mercy is upon us and upon his children. By way of recap, police, no more battle in our land. Dismantle your checkpoints and take them away. Even your IG said no more checkpoints. Or else you're asking for trouble and you will get it. All those arrested must be released. All those arrested must be released. Because we are entering into a very dark phase in the history of this. As I told them, by the time this process is over, people rather than trekking to the Atlantic, they'll be sorry, to the Mediterranean, uh, via Niger and the Sudan. They'll be trekking to Somalia. To go and seek asylum in Somalia because the zoo will be far more worse. It is, we have crossed it. You know, there is no hope now. How are you going to recover? Do you know how many arms there are in the country? How are you going to control all of that? It's too late now. The zoo is gone, it's dead, as I told you it would. And that is why Biafra will come. And that is why Chukuki Kabian will be praised forever and ever in our land. I thank you all very much for listening to us this very evening. And as always, do not forget, our enemies do not understand, they do not understand what we are doing. Our enemies think that what we are doing is child's play. They think that what we are doing is somehow connected to some frivolity. They do not understand that we are doing the will of God Almighty in heaven. That is why to us, Biafra is everything, even more than a religion. Biafra is our essence. Biafra is our identity. Biafra is the way we are. Biafra is who we are. And that is why we must fight for it. And here on Radio Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim, Onyangene Fembenine, Chukuki Kabiyama is our God. From me, from here, this very day, it is. Good evening. <laughs>